What up YouTube, it is Yuga, the voice of the dragons. And today I wanted to elaborate on a TikTok video that I made. So if you're not following me on TikTok, check me out. It'll be in the description below. Now on TikTok, I have been addressing myself as Yuga, the draconic witch. And I finally decided to take a stand and make it known that I am actually a draconic high priest. It's something that I've been for the last three years or so now but I just never felt the need to advertise it and I wanted to explain what exactly it means to be a draconic high priest so I have to go to a little bit of the beginning and kind of explain the, the transformation of what it was to become a draconic high priest so originally I never really associated with the term witch and I had a lot of dogma around the word, so I felt comfortable calling myself a dragon shaman, and I just left it at that. But looking back on my path and my understanding of how the different paths of working with dragons works, I was very much a draconian practitioner, even though I was just a dragon shaman. I didn't work with one specific dragon. I had a plethora of dragons within my magical circle that I called out to, but I never had my actual guardian. And the reason why that makes a huge difference is spirit guide is one thing, but a guardian, that's something else entirely. A spirit guide is just something that passes by and comes in your life and shows you the way. Whereas a guardian takes personal interest in you and your personal journey, and they make it their mission to see you solve out what you need to figure out for your truth. And so what's really interesting was my dragon guardian actually revealed himself to me in flesh and physically manifested himself within the first three months of my spiritual awakening. But I, I didn't understand why that dragon chose me. I didn't understand why I was given such a great sign. But I left it at that and I continued to call out to dragons and explore what they had to offer me. So being a dragon shaman, I called on the spirit of the dragon. Like I said, I did work a few, with a few named dragons, but nothing was ever really attached to me. And uh, more so on the path of the witch and being a draconic high priest, my initiation was a very, very intense process that lasted about three to five months. I can't remember off the top of my head. But essentially... Um, Part of my initiation was being renamed. As a dragon shaman, I was given the title the first black sweet. But as a draconic high priest, I was renamed and reborn with the title Hytherion. And what's interesting enough, I know I've mentioned this before, but this is a different video, so I want to bring it to attention. Um, Hytherion is the beast of time in Transformers. I had no recognition of what that actually was. Or should I say, I had no concept of that thing being in Transformers. But I had essentially named myself Hytherion based off my name Yuga, which can translate to Tender River in Japanese. And I saw in an old English book the word Hyth, H-Y-T-H-E. And it was very peculiar because of something that was happening, but it's not relevant, so I won't mention it. But a Hyth is a break in a body of water or a river. And that just instantly clicked, and I intuitively just put the word together, Hytherion. And it even sounded and felt sweet to taste in the mouth. Like when you say Hytherion, there's something that lingers within. But essentially, the transformation took place, and I was doing a lot of training as a vigilante. And I proved myself, and I proved my worth, not to just the dragons, but to those around me, in my community. I had actually saved someone's life with only my intuition to go off of. And let me tell you, it's pretty scary when you're in that position of knowing, holy shit, this person could die if I do not take the appropriate action to make sure they're okay. And then I had gone through an intense vision quest in Sedona, Arizona. And at the end of that vision quest, I felt reborn, I felt renewed, I felt like I was given my destiny with a clear path to follow. 
But that's all fine and dandy. But what does it actually mean to be a draconic high priest? Being a draconic high priest is where you work under the wings of one dragon and one dragon alone. You can call upon other dragons, but this dragon is tied to you and you to them. Being a dragon's priest is a very special gift. They grant you power, they grant you their strength, they grant you their knowledge and wisdom. And my blood has been blessed by my dragon god. I have literally bled the image of a dragon through this hand. And I know when the time comes, my dragon will return to me. And this time I won't be the only one that sees it. I will have an audience and it will be the world. But that is why I was named the Voice of the Dragons, because I was essentially chosen to be their ambassador. And that is a slightly different role than being a Draconic High Priest, but it's tied in my path together. And one thing I wanted to mention, <clears throat> my spirit, not my spirit, my spiritual connection and my magic, it was very primal when I was a Dragon Shaman. I worked with the essence of the heart and feeling and trusting your true primal, um, your true primal instinct. But being a dragon priest or a draconic high priest, however you want to say it, my magic became more ceremonial, calling out the name of my dragon and calling out to the draconic high rulers and performing essentially a banishing ritual and an abundance ritual. But it's tied in with many things. But what separates me from anyone else that you will see working with dragons, except one person, I'd say. So shout out to you, Tim Hai, if you see this, I hope you do. You are my brother on the dragon's path. But everyone else that I've come across that works as dragons works with another um, pantheon as well. And it's not that it's bad. It's not that it's not okay. But the dragons are very, very possessive creatures. And if you ever hear the legends of a dragon, like for Smog, for instance, he loved his gold and his treasure. And that's how dragons are, not necessarily a material possession, but what's theirs is theirs and theirs alone, and it will only belong to them. And so a dragon will tolerate you working with another god or goddess or a pantheon. Truthfully, they do wish for you to acknowledge only them. And that's why I always said my path was more draconian in nature because on the dragon's path, there is the draconic and draconian. Draconian tends to have a darker side to it. You call upon Lucifer and Lilith and Tiamat and Belial and Leviathan. Just to name a few. But essentially, from what I understand and what I've experienced, draconic is where you only call upon the dragon. Now, as far as dragons go, like I said, they're very kind of touchy and sensitive when it comes with what is involved in the circle that they're involved with. But there are dragon fey, and the fey kingdom tends to be, um, they have like an alliance with the dragons. So if you're considering going down the dragon's path, really ask yourself, do you want to see a dragon? Or do you want to be around a dragon? And even though I was very lost and confused, and I still had my dragon guardian manifest himself to me, I too was a child of Lucifer for quite a while. And my, my dragon guardian understood that I needed to grow as much as he wanted to be an influence on my life for all those years that he wasn't. I had to learn to trust him and only him. And through years of psychic development, through years of psychic development and bonding, we can telepathically talk on a whim. He's in my head quite often, and I don't have to call out to him. But when I do, it would be for ritual's sake. And there are certain times where I can feel his essence and mine merge and he will look through my eyes as they were his own so i'm gonna go ahead and cut the video off here i think i got everything i really wanted to say off my chest 
but um, like I said, I'm more active on TikTok, so I'll post that down in the description. And if you wish to follow me on Instagram, I'll go ahead and link that down as well. But please share your thoughts or experiences down in the comments below. I would love to interact with you and just hear more about what you're curious about. And on a side note, I'm posting this on Beltane. I personally will not be able to experience Beltane today. I have family priorities I need to attend to first, but I will make a video on my Beltane ritual. But like I said, I'll go ahead and cut off here. Thanks for watching, and hopefully we meet again. Thank you.